In PTC MathCAD Prime, there is a method of creating data sets called a table. And honestly, I'd never used it before. Someone submitted a worksheet for the MathCAD challenge on PTC community, and that person used tables. And I thought, wow, I need to learn how to use them. So I'm going to show you how. Here I have a worksheet. I want to create some data sets and then plot them for lunar distances from my home here in Seattle. To create the table, you can go to the matrices tables tab. And on the left hand side, we have a command for inserting a table. When I left click on it, here we can select the number of cells that we want on the table. And I want four columns. So let me scroll all the way down to get 10 rows. And then I'll click and then it drops it in my sheet. Let me adjust the position a little bit just by left dragging it. And you can see in the top row, all the different placeholders have read there. And in the top row for these placeholders, you are going to put the name of the variable that you want to use. And so in the first cell, I'm going to type in, I'm going to call it record. That'll just be a number for each individual record. And then I'm going to put in the date and then the Julian date. And then finally in the fourth column, I am going to put in the distance. And you'll notice that the row below allows me to enter in what units that I want to use. And so for the record, that's going to be unitless. With the date, that's going to be a string, so it will also be unitless. Here underneath the Julian date, I want to put the day in there. And if you can't remember what the unit is, just go to the math tab and then go to the units drop down. And here we have time and oh, turns out day is just day. So I will click on that. You can see that it is a unit because it is in blue. Then for the distance, I'm going to enter this in kilometers. So now I want to start filling in the different values here. Hey, I'm not going to bore you and fill in all of them, but here I'll put my cursor in the first row, first column, and I'm just going to put in the numerical number, let me put one, and then I can just use the arrow keys on the keyboard in order to tab down in the list. And then I realized, oh wait, I actually want to have 12 records in here. I want to have 12 rows. And to add more rows, you can use Shift and the Enter key. So let me hold down Shift on the keyboard and then Enter and I get another row. And let me do that one more time. And now I can put in 11 for my 11th record and 12 for my 12th record. All right, and I'm just using the keyboard cursor keys to move around. And let's see, I'll put in the first record. And I want this to be the date, and that'll be 1 January. And then let me cursor over to the Julian date, well, January 1st. I swear that January 1st happens to be the perigee. Uh, but the, the Julian date for that is the number 1. And the distance in kilometers, that is 358.033. And then I realized, oh, wait, I want to have a, another column. I want to have a column where I specify whether that is the perigee or the apogee. So if you want to add another column, you are going to hold down the shift key and then hit the space bar. Now we have our additional column. I will manually place my cursor in the placeholder for the name of the variable for the vector that will be created. And by the way, the table will create vectors of this data. And I'm just going to call it comment. And let me reposition over here. And I will type in the quotation mark so that this will be a string. And this is going to be the perigee. So there I have my first record filled in. Now I'm going to go about filling in the rest of these cells. And I'm just going to move around with the cursor. I'm not going to bore you as I fill this in. Hey, let's take a look at this in fast speed. All right, so that is good. I have finished filling in my table. Let me grab it once more and just adjust the location where I want it to appear 
on the worksheet. And you see that I didn't bother to fill in a few different values because I got tired. So let's see how we can use or evaluate these different variables. So let me scroll down and then let's type in one of them. Let's type in date and then hit the equal sign. And here you can see that we have our column vector of the different values. Let's do that once more for the Julian date, Julian equals, and then we get those numbers. And you'll notice that this got converted to seconds. It automatically changes it to the worksheet's base units or unit system, and I'm using SI. And for the last one, let me grab this and move it over. Let's evaluate the value of distance and hit the equal sign. And here you can see the value of the distance in meters because that is the base unit for length in the metric system or SI. All right, so now that I have the information from the table available as these different vectors, hey, let's take a look at an example of graphing it. Let me go to a new sheet and position my cursor. I will click on the chart component tool and then insert chart component. And now we have our inputs area. I will just right click in the inputs area and let's enter the X axis expression. And in the X axis, I want to put in the Julian date. Now again, it's going to use seconds for the unit system, but I want this to be in days. And so I will use the divide key and then type in day, which is the name of the unit. And then let's enter in our Y axis expression. And this is going to be the distance. And let me divide this and to make sure that it is going to be in kilometers, I will type in KM and then click out of there. You'll notice that after I clicked away, it changed both of the units to the blue color. And now I've got my graph plotted. I'm gonna make some changes to it. Let's double click to go into the chart editing mode. Let's use the plus sign to zoom in. And I'm gonna view this in a chart format. I think the data lends itself more to that. And let's see, I've got my chart down on the bottom for the x-axis. And let's then choose the title. And I'm going to call the x-axis title the Julian date. And then I can go to the setup. And let's use a user-defined range. And I like 0 to 160, but I've got a ton of bars in there. Hey, let's just do four divisions just to make it a little cleaner down at the bottom. Let's do the same on the Y axis and let's change the range to something that makes a little bit more sense. Let's go to the setup and let me change the format to number. I don't have to change zero decimal places. User defined range. I'm going to go to 42, 420,000 kilometers and then change this to 340. And then let's change the number of divisions. I think four should work for this range. There we go. That's nice, big, round numbers. And so that's how I can use the different vectors in order to compose a chart. Oh, yeah, let's do a little bit more setup. Let's put in our y-axis title. And this is going to be distance in kilometers and also put in for the chart itself let's put in a title and the chart title will be lunar distance from seattle those are really specific numbers that i use and so for the location let's change the title to be above centered everything else is great let's hit the x in the corner to get out of there Let's use the minus sign to collapse the inputs. Reposition the chart a little bit and just make it a little bit wider and longer. And there we can see how the distance from Seattle to the moon changes between the apogee and the perigee throughout the first part of 2022. But again, the whole point is 
this is how you can use the table kind of function in order to create different data sets that you want to use in matrix math or with different charts or plots. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.